This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Wishing for everyone a wonderful morning. Today is November 12, 2022. And in the news this morning, Glock, Pistol, and Ammo surrendered to Portland Police Undergun Amnesty. A Glock 199mm pistol along with two magazines was on Thursday handed over to the police in Portland under the ongoing gun amnesty. The items were handed over to the sub-officer in charge at the Sanson Police Station. Commanding Officer of the Portland Police Division, Superintendent Lloyd Darby, lauded the efforts of the police in the parish. I thank the team that participated in this operation and all the members of the Portland Police Division for their continued efforts which are reaping success, said Darby. On Thursday, in the neighboring parish of St. Mary, an assault rifle was handed over to the police under the gun amnesty. The amnesty which was enacted through the Firearms Prohibition Restriction and Regulation Firearms Amnesty Order of 2022 and the resolution passed by Parliament began on November 4 and ends on November 20. It gives holders of illegal guns one last chance to turn them in and avoid a tough sanctions, including a mandatory 15-year prison sentence that are included in Jamaica's revised firearm law. Public pressure led to murder charges, says Roshan Patterson's lawyer. Michelle Thomas, the attorney representing Roshan Patterson, who was on Friday charged with a murder in the strangulation death of social media influencer Anika Slickliana Townsend insists that the police have merely bowed to public pressure in moving forward with the case. Now that he is charged, the defense can now come together. The police are entitled to do what benefits their professional work, and we will have to do what is in his interest and be guided by his constitutional rights to defend himself. So let it begin, Thomas told the news. Earlier in the day, Superintendent Vernon Ellis who is in charge of the St. James Police Division, announced on social media that Patterson had been charged ending days of speculation. The Hanover man, who is also known as Shizzy, was taken into custody on November 2 and later slapped with assault charges in connection with a case from 2018. Lawmen questioned him about the Townsend case on Tuesday. On Friday, the police said footage from the Jamaica ICC-TV network and the forensic evidence gathered during a high-level investigation across several teams within the Jamaica Constabulary Force helped them gather enough evidence to charge the 33-year-old with a murder. Also charged in connection with the case is 47-year-old security guard Rohan Early B. Rhodes. He is charged with misprison of felony, an accusation that he was either involved in the matter and or failed to notify the authorities. According to the timeline laid out by the police, Townsend traveled from Kingston to Montego Bay on October 20. She was seen with Patterson at a Hanover restaurant and a guest house in St. James. At some point during the night, an argument developed between them, which resulted in Patterson strangling Townsend and disposing of her body, said Friday's statement from the police. Townsend's scantily clad body was retrieved from the sea in Reading between St. James and Hanover on October 21. The police are trying to establish whether Patterson has committed other offenses. Investigations are ongoing as it is suspected that Patterson may have been involved in other incidents similar to those for which he has been charged. As a result, detectives are appealing to the public for any information that may assist in the investigation. Persons may contact the Montego Bay CIB at 876-684-9080, Crime Stop at 311, Police Emergency at 119, or the nearest police station, the press release said. Lennon High mourns beloved physics teacher Anne-Marie McLegon. Lennon High School in Moko Clarendon is mourning the death of physics teacher Anne-Marie McLegon, who died on Friday afternoon. The news understands that McLegon had been battling heart-related complications for some time. Friends and colleagues have lauded McLegon as a phenomenal educator, philanthropist, and humanitarian who was an active member of several community groups in her Longville Park community. Head of the school's science department, Joan Knight Henry, 
told the news that despite the McLagan's illness and the special arrangements put in place by the institution to facilitate her, she was adamant to carry out her mandated task regularly, citing a keen interest in the well-being of her students. She just wanted her students to do well. She really wanted to get better, said Knight Henry. She told the news that McLagan was nicknamed Minister of Information by her colleagues as she kept the school groups up to date and had a knack for being in the know. According to Knight Henry, McLagan, who had been at the institution since 1997, had overseen several developmental projects, including hosting a fundraiser to start the construction of the school's sixth form block. She was a Lennon High School's sixth form coordinator, the president of the South Central Saints Teachers Association, and held several posts in the Jamaica Teachers Association. Community activist Ava Tomlinson wept uncontrollably as she spoke of McLegon. Noting that they last spoke on Friday morning, Tomlinson told the news that the last project McLegon spearheaded dates back to a week and a half ago where she facilitated the payment of Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate subjects for a student. Tomlinson shared that she and McLegon became closer since they both fell ill. She praised McLegon for her stellar support, who amid her own hurdles, never relented in showing up for others. I've had a major life-changing situation since October, and she just became the wind beneath my wings, and she has been supporting me wholeheartedly. She is such a gem, said Tomlinson, as she struggled to speak. Community members have also lauded McLegon for leading numerous charitable ventures, especially since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Health Minister contracts five private facilities to perform elective surgeries. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has signed contracts with five private health institutions in Kingston to perform elective surgeries and to provide recovery spaces for public sector patients. This is being facilitated under the public-private partnership component of the Project Code Care Initiative. The institutions are the University Hospital of the West Indies, Andrews Memorial Hospital, Heart Institute of the Caribbean, Medical Associates Hospital, and the Winchester Surgical and Medical Institute. These institutions will serve patients in the Southeast Regional Health Authority which covers Kingston and St. Andrew, St. Catherine and St. James. A total of 2,000 surgeries will be performed under code care, which aims to clear the backing of outstanding elective cases built up during the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking Thursday at the signing ceremony at the Ministry's Emergency Operations Center in New Kingston, Dr. Christopher Tufton said approximately 115 surgeries have so far been conducted under the program. So we have the first team coming December 1 to 6, these are operating theater nurses who will work at Noel Homes with a surgical team to help with that. And we're hoping that beyond that, we will have a group coming in every week. So we have been talking to our diaspora, our friends of Jamaica, and we have had over 100 expressions of interest because we are short on nurses. That's a bottleneck, operating theater nurses. The teams are now reviewing the course outline for emergency care and for oncology, cancer care, and I'm hoping that they will agree on an outline that will see the first batch of trainees. These are RNs now who will go to do advanced training um, sometime in the early new year. If it works, then we can expand it because I do see over time a more, much more mobility in labor. What I'm trying to do or we are trying to do is to get the mobility to work two ways. Just over $1 billion has been budgeted for the code care program. Of the sum, $80 million is earmarked for rehabilitating operating theaters in the public health system, $200 million for private-public partnerships, $223 million for equipment, $279 million for nursing missions, and $153 million for additional staff hours. Another $23 million is earmarked for project management, and the $59 million for communications. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.